What's up, Seminole fans? Welcome to the very first edition of Three Torches, a student-produced monthly segment bringing you the top stories from around FSU's campus and the Tallahassee community. I'm your host, Jordan Karnbeck. The FSU Visitor Center takes pride in their ambassador-led campus tours. The center works hard to help lead these prospective students across campus and through the admissions process. Florida State University's Visitor Center is one of the first buildings students and parents step foot in when coming onto campus. The center is known for their tremendous tours led by passionate student ambassadors. I always knew I wanted to do something that was going to like leave a mark on the FSU campus. So there was a couple things that I was looking into doing my freshman year. I thought University of Basel was going to be the best um, option for me. Um, and I have like no regrets. It's been a, a great like experience. I've loved talking to families that, you know, they're coming to FSU and they're looking specifically for that like that experience from FSU students. Um, so that was something that like that really like helped me uh, make that decision really to get this job. In 2005, the Visitor Center was integrated into the Office of Admissions. Lisa McGrady worked in the program while as a student at FSU, but her passion for helping students is what ultimately led her to work full-time with the center after graduation. We are a direct recruiting arm of the university, so my interest in admissions kind of led me back to recruiting on campus here at the Visitor Center. And of course, the students are a big part of why I enjoy my job. I really like working with student populations, seeing them grow and develop. Being an admissions counselor, I really recognize the joy of bringing higher education to students and how transformative that can be as well. To join the Student Ambassadors program, students must first attend a series of interviews before being chosen for the job. But when choosing the right leaders, Jenna and her team look for a variety of authentic qualities seen only in a true student ambassador. Nothing beats a true lived-in story of a Florida State student. That's what students really want to see. So when it comes to picking college, that's a very difficult decision. So seeing what it's like to actually put your feet on campus, seeing what students have been through, seeing what maybe you can do here at Florida State is also so important. So we're looking for the same kind of diversity that you have here at Florida State. Um, and a lot of people think that you might look for an extroverted person to be a tour guide. Uh, we certainly want somebody that is not afraid to, to talk to people, but they don't have to be highly skilled in public speaking when they get here. That's certainly something that's part of our training and, and that we will um, definitely foster and encourage if they get the job. Um, I think the most important thing is that you do love your time here at FSU and you are engaged and involved in campus. Ambassadors use specific techniques when conducting a tour to not sell the potential students on FSU's campus but to make them feel welcome and wanted. We want our tours to be a, a storyteller's event in a sense. We don't want to tell you, you have to come to Florida State. We're not going to tell you this is the best and perfect school because it's going to be different for every student. So we say who we are, not what we aren't. The ambassadors use the saying, the power of the polo, which truly means so much here at the Visitor Center. Putting on that polo is more than just leading a tour or meeting families and students. It's about leading prospective new Seminoles to change the future of Florida State. Uh, the power of the polo, it just, I think it kind of represents FSU, represents what we stand for, because um, it's kind of like a, it's like a uniform basically, and it's just letting us know that like we have this job, we're here to represent FSU, we're the face of FSU, um, and we're here to make sure that the guests are getting the, the best experience possible. I'm Olivia Ellis, reporting. Take a trip to the Visitor Center to discover all that Florida State has to offer. College is a time for students to broaden their skills and discover their passions. The College of Communications Advanced Feature Reporting and Production course provides students with hands-on experiential learning. Nairi Iskandarian takes us behind the scenes. 
With more than 275 degree programs, Florida State University offers an unmatched educational experience. For students who crave being in front of a camera or honing their editing and graphic skills, the School of Communications Advanced Feature Reporting and Production courses provide the hands-on learning needed to prepare students for future success. I think they should expect a real world experience. Uh, they're going to have to know how to work with deadlines and finish a project on time. And that positions them to, uh, with a real world example of what it'll be like when they get into their careers. I think that incoming students should expect nothing but a lot of learning experience and a lot of growth as a DMP and media communication student. Because this class gives you a lot of exposure and what the actual field looks like. Again, that storytelling, beginning, middle, and end, beginning, middle, and end, beginning, middle, and end. How do you start a story? What is this story about? What is it you're trying to say? How do you make, how do you want to make people feel? You know, all of those instincts, those things were forged where you're sitting, you know, um, in that same room, in that same sort of space. Former student Kristen Chase recently began her professional broadcasting career as a producer with WCJB in Gainesville, Florida. So if you want to be in the news industry, this is 100% where you need to start because you're going to get that on-camera experience. You're going to get that professional interaction with your classmates and with instructors, as well as coaches and sports information directors and athletes. And what I've really enjoyed is that they're broadening out even more uh, past athletics. Camera shyness or perhaps a fear of working under deadlines shouldn't deter anyone from wanting to take advanced feature. The instructors and fellow students will assure you and provide you all the help you need to be successful. It's my job to, you know, get everybody up to speed as soon as possible so that they're all, you know, along the same kind of line when it comes to producing features. So uh, we do that and we support them, but yeah, they, uh, they come in with a lot of varied backgrounds and we just make sure that we help wherever their deficiencies are. Even students in the past have been very successful who've come in with little or no experience because we work very closely with them and, and provide a lot of assistance. And you know, if you're coming in without too much experience, um, just literally come in like a sponge and just absorb all the information that you're gonna learn. Director and producer Ratesh Gupta was once a student in this class who is now accepting awards from all over the world. From Webby Awards to Emmy nominations, Ratesh is living out his dream of creating and telling inspirational stories through production on a national and international stage. I just worked with Beats by Dre um, on a uh, short film that ended up being sort of a brand um, relaunch and, and a brand sort of mission statement. It was called You Love Me. Like Ritesh, many students who have come through advanced feature have found great success in the workforce. So now that I've graduated from my undergrad, I'm currently working with a media production company here at FSU. And I'm in charge of just like managing all the media, but I'm also doing a lot of producing and editing on my own. And that's something I wouldn't be doing right now if I hadn't taken advanced feature. It brings me a lot of personal and professional satisfaction because we bring many years of experience in the field and seeing students be successful moving on in their careers and maybe taking a little bit of that knowledge they gain in this class and taking that out into their careers and being successful in their careers, you know, it makes it, that's why we do it. I see these kids and they're out there tearing it up. They're, they're winning Oscars, they're winning Emmys, they're flying all over the world. Uh, it, it's just amazing what they get to do. And to be a small part of that, if, if we gave them any sort of foundation while they were here, yeah, that makes me proud. Advanced Feature has so much to offer, but ultimately it's up to the student to take that next step. Get out there, stop talking about it, start making it, sign up for this class, challenge yourself, go out there and be a person that takes practical application and that gets better by reps, 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 not talk, talk, talk. Former advanced feature reporting students now work as reporters, anchors, and producers in broadcast markets throughout the nation, including San Diego, Denver, Bismarck, 
North Dakota, Tallahassee, Gainesville, Fort Myers, Miami, and throughout Florida. You know, if you want to get the most out of this class, you have to put in the work and you have to put in the time. This class is the best way to break into the news reporting industry, 100%. Advanced feature production graduates have gone to win Oscars, Emmys, Clios, and many other awards while working for top media companies such as Turner Studios, HBO Films, MTV, DreamWorks, ESPN, Fox Sports, and many others. Thanks to this class, I edit the way I edit today. I like know how to do features by myself. I know how to put a camera together by myself, how to put audio by myself. This class gave me a lot of insight into what the real world looks like in terms of media productions. You gotta get out there and, and make it. I'm Nairi Skandarian, reporting. If you aspire to produce, edit, or report, sign up for Advanced Feature. And who knows, maybe your feature will be next on Three Torches. With over 400 students from every department on campus, the FSU Marching Chiefs bring their vibrant sights and sounds to campus-wide events all year long. Danielle Kelly shares what it takes to bring the wall of sound to life. The Florida State University Marching Chiefs have been bringing Seminole football games to life ever since making their first appearance in the 1949 to 1950 season. Recognized as the band that never lost a halftime by Sports Illustrated, the Chiefs continue to illuminate Doe Campbell Stadium today with their exceptional performances and the famous Seminole War chant that never fails to bring fans to their feet. And with so many musically inclined students coming to FSU, the band continues to maintain over 400 committed members each year, all eager to share their passion with Seminoles everywhere. I discovered Chiefs in seventh grade. Uh, my band director was actually playing a Marching Chief CD, and it was one of the most glorious things I had heard as a little Metro seventh grader. Major, Jordan Since then, I've kind of had a dream to be a part of it, and I've just seen that dream come to fruition, and it's, uh, it's been awesome. It's been a great five years here. But living the dream as a Chief requires sacrifice. Along with more than 20 hours of rehearsal per week, each member pulls $150 out of pocket for instrument supplies, uniform, and other items needed to perform. But that is where Chiefs United steps in. You know, for many years, uh, we've asked our students to have to pay out of pocket for a lot of necessary items. Uh, and so that adds up, you know, given that they, they put all this time to service to the university and the athletic department, uh, you know, asking them to put any money forward was something that we weren't we were really no longer comfortable with. The prospect of Chiefs United, it's been really amazing that um, we can possibly eliminate those things and eliminate any costs that it would take for um, someone to be a part of the Marching Chiefs. The launch of Chiefs United aims to fund a $1.6 million grant, generating $60,000 a year. This gives every Chief the opportunity to continue spreading their school spirit through the love of music. The Chiefs United program, I'm so excited for. To offer everybody an equal level playing field, I think it's super important because a lot of us come from many different backgrounds and that's what makes Chiefs so great. The diversity, all the different walks of life and just to have everybody set up with the same equipment, the same materials, everyone's ready to go. Everyone's gonna have much more fun and be able to do our jobs that much more effectively. Uh, so the campaign uh, is a fantastic idea that was kind of kind of developed a while ago and kind of really pushed out this year. Uh, and the goal is to, to get the students not to come out of pocket for a lot of things. But it's just one thing that we can reward them for for their time and dedication. So the things they have to pay for, like a shirt and a hat and shoes, uh, that's wear and tear. So you may have to buy two or three pair over a time frame. But why not allow you to just go ahead and come in and enjoy what you're doing and you have to worry about coming out of pocket. And as the saying goes, hard work truly pays off especially when a chief commits their time and talents to bring the heartbeat to Florida State University. And thanks to Chiefs United, their dedication doesn't go unnoticed. Uh, knowing that 10 years from now, hopefully a lot of things that we're trying to implement with them, where there's hard work, dedication, pushing yourself, uh, you know, with something that you enjoy and seeing the benefit out of it uh, is one of the biggest things. Fantastic group of students. They work really hard. We just want to make sure that we give them that same just of their energy and time as well. And we use that campaign of Chiefs United to make that happen. 
These talented individuals work tirelessly to bring their unique musical experience to Florida State, and these contributions will keep the sights and sounds of Doak alive. I would love to say thank you to those who have already donated, and um, please consider donating if you haven't already. Uh, it's an extremely important fund to making sure that uh, we keep people happy and healthy in Chiefs and eliminate any burden that they might have and get as many people as we can in to participate with the Marching Chiefs. No, thank you so much. I mean, for every donor that comes through, it's helping one more Chief. And whether that's a freshman that's about to quit because they can't continue with expenses or a senior that's about to go on to their real job and this is their last memento of what the university needs to them, it's, it's amazing and thank you so much. So we've always had a great history of support uh, from the university and the foundation and our alums. And so we really feel like they're gonna recognize this opportunity to, to really give back to the students and help help us, you know, kind of recognize their contributions to the university and put a little bit of extra money in their pockets, you know, in thanks for what they do. To make your pledge, you can go to one.fsu.edu or navigate to the FSU College of Music homepage. Your donation will reward a chief's commitment to bringing out the best of our FSU community through the sound of music. One band, one goal, every chief. I'm Danielle Kelly, reporting. If you would like to support the FSU Marching Chiefs in reaching their campaign goal, please donate today at one.fsu.edu to help keep the band that never lost a halftime on top. Having battled cancer at a young age, Florida State freshman Taylor Kogel continues to support families in their fight through her FLA Foundation. Reporter Abby Gerald has the story. Childhood illnesses can be one of the toughest things a family can go through. Over 3,500 children are diagnosed with leukemia each year and are faced with the many hardships it brings. Taylor Kogel, a Florida State freshman and Tallahassee native, takes us along her battle with cancer. When I was three years old, I was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It came out of the blue. It was a complete shock. Um, she just had a fever and we took her to the doctor and the next thing I knew, we were in an ambulance on the way to Shams. I started treatment right away and then I went through 27 months of treatment and then I was cancer free by five, five and a half and ever since then I still go to checkups each year. I just keep on seeing my doctor and hopes that it doesn't come back. Taylor's leukemia diagnosis changed the way the Kogel family lived their lives. They are forever grateful that Taylor is there with them today. I think that was the biggest thing is that you're just going about your everyday life and then all of a sudden you know, you're in the hospital and just navigating a whole new path, but it was a blessing she was three when she went through it. Um, but, you know, because I know she remembers some of it, but the parts that are hazy, that's okay. So I don't, I don't want her to remember all of it. It was pretty, pretty awful. But Taylor did not let her traumatic journey through treatment define her. She wanted to do everything in her power to give back to those who are going through the same battle she conquered. Going into my senior year of high school, I went to one of my appointments and I was talking to my oncologist and so he gave me a whole list of scholarships that I can apply for because of all my like like my treatments and everything and I told him, I was like, I just feel like guilty accepting these because it's amazing these people are giving these out but like I'm not giving anything back. She was sitting at dinner one night and she said, I've decided I want to start a foundation and her younger sister said, well that sounds fun, I want to help. So her dad and I said, you know what, then I need you to go upstairs. I need you guys to work on your three month, six month, nine month, and 12 month plan. We went upstairs and we came up with a list of ideas of like foundation names and just things we could do to give back and we wrote them down in a notebook that we still have and then after that we just decided to start the foundation. The Kogel family put their heads together and finalized their plan of giving back. This was the birth of the FLA Foundation. It's FLA, so it stands for Faith, Love, and Applesauce, because it's like the three things my mom said helped us like get through, especially applesauce, because since I was so young, I couldn't swallow that many pills every day, so I took all of my medicine in applesauce. 
I was nervous when I launched because I launched September of senior year and no one I went to high school with ever knew I had leukemia. I was really quiet about it. Um, even some of my closest friends didn't know. So when I posted it on social media, it kind of like, it exploded. Taylor's Faith Love and Applesauce Foundation provides bushel of love baskets for families at Shands battling childhood leukemia. These baskets contain blankets, public gift cards, cleaning supplies, applesauce, and much more. Everything that goes in the, the baskets, the bushel of love baskets that the foundation does, represents something that was helpful to us in the beginning. So to think that we were there before Taylor was there, so had we been there after Taylor started doing these baskets, to think that there would be a basket that has you know, provisions in there to you know, give us a snack or to bring some happiness and some hope, that to me, I get chills even talking about it. And I, not only do I think what Taylor is doing for Shans is special, I think she can take that idea and I think it's gonna spread over other hospitals as well. So I'm really excited to see how she grows her program. Included in these baskets is also an inspirational book that Taylor's mom wrote herself. The title of the book is Faith, Love, and Applesauce that Kim wrote. They're sent blogs out every day to keep everybody posted. And what happened was we'd had them printed out three years worth of everyday blogs and had them put into a book. And Rob had always said his hope was that it could help somebody. It needed some tips and tricks about how to best navigate it. and. Um, yeah, that, that's really our hope is that, you know, not just the book, but also Taylor's Foundation can help provide some of that support. With all of the support of FSU and the Tallahassee community, the FLA Foundation has gone above and beyond its initial goals. It's amazing. We've gotten letters back about how, like, we put blankets in the baskets and how my kid was getting an infusion today and he was really cool and he needed a blanket or the applesauce has been great, or the books have helped with all of these like ideas that we hadn't even thought of. It's been really nice to be able to help them. Taylor took such a tough battle in her own life and turned it into something truly amazing that is touching many families' lives. When I was going through treatment, not everyone I went through treatment with made it. So I am lucky enough to be here to give back to these kids, and not everyone I'm giving baskets to will make it, which is really hard but at least they're getting something, they're getting some sort of support system. I think I'm most proud that she decided to talk about it because for a while she didn't want to, um, but she has affected and helped so many families by talking about it and giving tips and tricks on like how to kind of take that on because it's a really hard experience. It's part of her. Um, I think it's part of her character, but she's never let it define her. So she's, you know, a sister, a soccer player, a, you know, a student, a friend, you know, she's all those things, but, you know, cancer has never defined her. With inspiration from Taylor and her family, when life gives you apples, make applesauce. I'm Abby Gerald reporting. Make sure to check out Taylor's FLA Foundation to help support families battling childhood leukemia. This FSU cheerleader has won the hearts of Seminole fans as he proves that nothing can stand in the way of achieving your dreams. Ragad Hamad shares the inspiring story of Mitch Tillman. Ignore all the people who doubt you and when they least expect it, surpass them. There is no failure except in no longer trying. 18 years old, FSU cheerleader Mitch Tillman was born with an amniotic band syndrome which is a genetic condition that results in distortions of the limbs. At an early age, like, obviously kids, they don't have like a filter. So if they saw me in public, they wouldn't like think twice about pointing or looking or like saying something about my arm. Regardless of having a disorder, Tillman's parents say Mitch has always faced his obstacles with strength and determination. I've always been amazed at what he could do. He was always determined uh, to find a way uh, to do things. Um, I remember as a baby, if there was something he wanted to hold on to, he would tuck it under his left arm. We are never approached it with, uh, like some parents probably would have and said, oh, well, you can't, you can't do this, or let me do this for you. We, we let him do it, didn't offer to help him unless he asked. Though he's only a freshman of Florida State, 
Tillman's cheerleading career began years ago with the Memphis Pride, where he competed for five years, winning first place in 2018 summits and nationals. He actually started uh, getting interested in gymnastics when he was really young. You know, he'd run around the house and stand on his head and do, you know, back, you know, somersaults and things. That, and he just really loved all that stuff. Going and trying to do like something like gymnastics or tumbling, I had that thought in my head, like, can I do this? Like, I, I literally have one arm. How am I going to do this? Like, it wasn't just like a sudden, like, oh, it worked out. Like, it was like a long process of like, like working hard and like little steps. When applying to Florida State's cheerleading squad, Tillman did not make it the first round of tryouts. But his coach says she's never been happier that he reached out to her. Mitch is um, extremely talented. Uh, when he actually sent his tryout video, I didn't receive it at first. I got an email saying that I wasn't on the team, like I didn't make it. So I was completely heartbroken. Like I thought like all that effort I had put into cheerleading and everything was just for nothing. Like. He um, picked up the phone and called me and said, you know, is it because of my disability? Well, I hadn't even seen his video, so I had no idea what he was talking about. So I explained to him I didn't get his video, so he sent me the video. Um, and after watching it, I was absolutely amazed and blown away by the talent that he had. Tillman's teammates believe he's been a great addition to the team. Mitch is so positive. I love Mitch. Um, Mitch has been a great addition to our team. Mitch is so like, just ready to try everything. Like his spirit, like on the team like, every day, it's just, he's always happy. Like even at 6 a.m. workouts, he comes in just smiling and waving at us. And it's just a great like start of the morning for me. With his positive attitude and strong motivated mindset, Tillman is an inspiration to many. What I want other people to take away whenever they see me or like they get to know me is that like no matter what conditions you have, like whatever setbacks you think you have, um, if you want something and like you really want it, that you should go for it no matter what and like put your whole heart into it because whenever you get to whatever that is, it feels amazing. You know you've overcome so much through all of that and all the challenges you've been put through. So yeah, you, it makes you feel like you can do anything else, like really. This is Regat Hamad reporting. As Mitch cheers on the Seminoles and inspires fans, he shows us what it truly means to be unconquered. That's all for this month's edition of Three Torches. Be sure to tune into our next show airing March 2022. With the help of our production team and my lead producers, Jim Garbarino and Christopher Arendt, I'm your host, Jordan Karnbeck.